Hello my dear jewellery lovers, do you believe in mysticism? Today our story will be about the most mysterious jewellery in the history of mankind no matter how much we would like to think otherwise. The history of mankind is full of bitter events related to jewellery, centuries old conflicts, assassination attempts, loss of sanity, all this, in one way or another, happened in pursuit of the cherished crystal. For centuries, depending on the quality and rarity, jewellery was considered a sign of status or even a strong amulet. Countless talented and ambitious people have put their heads together because of the desire to possess the rarest and most colourful pieces made of noble metal with precious inlays. One is forced to wonder whether it is by chance that so many mysterious and exciting stories are told about certain necklaces and earrings, rings and tiaras. What is more in these stories at the end of the day? Truth or legend? Let's get to the bottom of it. Virginia Aldoni's opal ring. The opal stone is deservedly considered almost the most attractive and expensive gemstone in the world. Surprisingly, for centuries, there have been all sorts of legends and horror stories surrounding it, the origins of which originate from the royal family in Spain. And after all, it was just a gift. For the first time about the sad stone became known at the wedding of the Spanish King Alfonso the 12th Bourbon. The wedding was held splendidly, and one of the most unpredictable gifts to the bride was a gold ring with an unimaginable opal, which was presented by Alfonso's former lover Virginia Aldoni. The newlyweds are not a bit embarrassed by the fact that Virginia was happy engagement, although she herself bitterly regretted it. However predictable it was, the happiness of young people did not last long. The young girl died within six months after the wedding. An unknown disease struck not only the bride, but also the king's grandmother. Alas, the death of his sister did not wait long either. It was only here that the king thought of the connection between all three deaths. Each wore the ill-fated opal ring given at the wedding. Rumour had it that the jewel had found solace after all. But that's just a rumour. It is not known where it is or what became of it. Historians insist that all of the above is nothing more than a legend. But the folk wisdom, there is no smoke without fire. After all, no one cancels the Hope Diamond. Perhaps the creepiest stories are not only about opals. It is understandable. Diamonds are so expensive and irreplaceable that the boundless desire to possess them embraces almost any connoisseur. Some are ready to go to great lengths, while others are ready to do literally anything. One of such stones with notoriety is nicknamed Hope, the name of which is more ironic than deserved. But what is the catch here, all in order? There is a legend that the Hope Diamond first appeared in India. In India, it is said that Hope is the eye of one of the most ancient gods in Hinduism, Rama. The stone was considered so sacred that it was not supposed to have an owner. And those who would want to own hope should prepare themselves for misfortunes that would not end until the owner's death. Believe it, neither did King Louis XIV. Following his scepticism, he wished to own this jewel no matter what. He managed to get it, but he died horribly. He had to suffer for several days in a terrible agony, from which no one found salvation. Further, the stone only walked on the hands of numerous courtiers, and no one brought happiness. Someone got poorer, someone got sick, and someone went mad. But why hope? The penultimate owner, Henry Hope, named it so, having rejected another uncomplicated name, French Blue. Today, the Hope Diamond is not a cause for concern. It is peacefully stored in the United States, in the Smithsonian Institute. Now it is just a museum exhibit, which can be viewed by everyone. The Eagle Diamond Captivating Eagle Diamond, alas, was another gem whose fateful fate completely overshadowed its unrivaled luxury and quality. The diamond too came from India. It too was considered holy, and it too was once lost, stolen or worse, simply sold. This typical beginning is followed by a series of unbelievable events that even the great Sherlock Holmes could not solve. Therefore, everything you will read further is rather just a beautiful fairy tale, invented to create a special atmosphere around the mineral. One of the first to suffer from the diamond was a Russian aristocrat, Count Orlov. 
having once bought the stone for his beloved. He died of insanity a few years afterwards. The fate of the stone is unknown. It was not until the early 1930s that the duel was recorded in the United States. It is said that the American J. Paris, who led the transaction, after its completion jumped from a skyscraper, but more or less reliable information says that in 1950, it was decided to split the cursed diamond into three parts in order to lift this very curse. After that, no oddities were noticed for all of. The jewel was quietly exhibited in museums and exhibitions, and after that it was sold at Christie's auction. As we mentioned earlier, it may well be that the legendary stories were created by enterprising traders who wanted to add value to the goods they were selling. The Haran Allen killer Amethystites, hard to find more positive energy than Amethyst. This gentle, calm stone is associated primarily with mental balance and harmony, but there is always an exception to the rules. It all started rather predictably. A certain William Ferris, seeing the crystal, planned a kidnapping and soon paid for it. Whether the gods decided to punish the thief or the stone itself is hard to judge. One thing is clear. The pendant inlaid with this amethyst led to bankruptcy, and soon he was mowed down by an unknown disease. But the enchanting amethyst remained in the family and was given to the son, but not for long. Sensing something wrong, the boy began to look for ways to get rid of the stone, until finally he found Jaron Allen, a scientist who believed only in science, but faith did not protect him from harm. Small and large troubles began to happen to him. Thinking, the scientist simply threw the stone into the gutter in one of the districts of London. However, this was not the end of the story. Honest English workers who worked on the street saw the pendant with a beautiful stone and sent it to the museum. Surprisingly, it was in this museum that Jaron Allen quietly labored himself. What about the amethyst now? It lives peacefully in England in the Museum of History, and they say it does no harm now. Croesus Gold Brew Chevrion has probably heard the phrase Richest Croesus. The lost treasures of wealthy Croesus were so expensive that the king put serious curses on them. According to legend, only the descendants of Croesus could possess the riches, and all others would face an inevitable agonizing death. It was later learnt that Croesus' curses have no expiry date. The seven men who first found the long-awaited treasure died agonizing deaths. One of the brooches, resembling a horse, came to epitomize this whole mystical epic. Like the previous jewelry, passing from one owner to another, it brought only misfortune. The last resting place of this brooch became a museum in Turkey. It seems that the legend has developed as in past stories, the fate of a museum piece, which as if no one owns, can be considered ideal for such cursed jewellery. But unfortunately, this crystal was attracting too much attention. About 18 years ago, dodgy thieves snuck into the museum and stole Creasy's brooch, replacing it with a very similar replica. They were able to find the missing piece. But what was the fate of the relic? Were the robbers able to sell the stolen brooch and profit from the sale of this unique piece? In fact, the answer is primitively simple. The hapless thieves confessed to what they had done and gave the relic back, without explaining the reason for the return. The fate of the crooks is unknown, but the brooch is still kept in this museum. Borgia Rinch, what does the name Borgia mean to you? Basically, they are typical aristocrats with unlimited wealth, but they're not as harmless as you might think. They had a short conversation with their enemies. They just killed the undesirables, but they did it with flavor. For example, they used the services of poison rings, family jewels Borgia, which were passed on by inheritance. For example, one of these rings was equipped with an unremarkable box with deadly poison. If the lid was pulled back slightly, the poison would immediately sink into the victim's skin. The main thing was to shake hands and avert attention. They had a whole box of these things. What now with these deadly jewelry nobody knows? There is a version that after the death of all members of the Borgia family, these jewels were destroyed. Anyway, for a long time, these jewels have not been shown to the human eye, and it's probably for the best. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and write which jewelry you like the most.